jsou lepší investice do velkých anebo malých společností. V minulém roce vyhodili malé. Jak to bude letos? O tom si budu povídat s portfolio manažerkou BNT Pariba z Bostonu, Spojených států, Pamelovou. Pamela, welcome. Thank you. First question: small caps and large caps. The pros and cons, please briefly. Well, we do like both of them, but you know I'll go into some of the pros and cons. Uh, in terms of small caps, we believe that over a long period of time, from um, 1925 uh, to the present, we've seen that small caps have consistently outperformed large caps on a 10-year uh, rolling annualized basis. And we also believe that you know there was only two periods, uh, short brief periods, in which it didn't, and that was uh, post World War II as well as um, as well as uh, pre the the tech bubble. Uh, we also believe that the uh, the lack of research coverage uh, lends a lot of benefits to active portfolio management. So therefore, we believe that uh, in doing a lot of research on our own, we could exploit uh, a lot of the alpha potential. So that's small caps, how about large caps? What are the pros and cons, the benefits, and maybe a downside, if you will? Okay, sure. Well, um, for the large caps, uh, over 40% of their sales is exposed to, uh, to foreign sales. Um, and with, with regards to the Russell 2000, the smaller caps, those have about 20% or so. So basically, the large caps have higher exposure to international markets than the small caps. Uh, the other thing is that the valuations of the large caps are, are more attractive, uh, especially uh, relative to bonds. Um, and so we also think in a rising yield environment that large caps uh, should outperform. Uh, we also believe that uh, the strong recovery in the U.S. Uh, as well as globally should benefit large caps. And we also believe that uh, uh, in addition to their valuations being attractive, we think that rising dividend yields are also an attractive feature of large caps. Uh, let's give a couple of examples of small and large caps you like at the beginning of this year. In the small cap side, there is Alnylam Pharmaceuticals. It's one of our favorite uh, top top pick ideas of, at the moment. Uh, they are an early stage uh, biotech company that has a platform technology called RNA interference. And it is um, it is basically um, enables uh, rare, disor rare disorder diseases um, to be um, potentially treated. And uh, just recently, Genzyme and uh, Sanofi have um, put in a 12% stake in the company that really uh, speaks to the confidence that they have in their long-term platform strategy. On the large cap side, we like Gilead. Um, this is a you know a, a company that uh, really focuses on uh, HIV uh, as well as hemophilia and other uh, rare disorder uh, diseases as well. Uh, we believe that not only are they able to uh, come up with um, uh, these drugs uh, for treatment, but they are also able to prolong lives uh, as well as uh, cure um, uh, patients uh, with hepatitis C. So that's a very important company. Both of these companies, uh, Al Nylum and Gilead, have strong balance sheets. Um, they also have very strong uh, earnings outlooks, which, which we believe are not yet reflected in their valuations over the next three to five years.